Hi, welcome along to another video. Plenty to go through this week. Coming up later, some weather modification information for Texas. Texans are taking part in a weather modification experiment, whether they would like to or not. All the links to the articles are in the information section of this video. We start in the Irish Times with an article about an artist that's had a documentary made about them. So pulling out a couple of paragraphs, much of his time has recently been spent photographing clouds. Here we get into tricky territory. Hillam believes that irregularities in the formations suggest that something mysterious is afoot among the heavens. Growing up in the north makes one conspiracy minded, he says. You have seen a shooting and know the BBC is lying about it. Whether modification is a real thing. There is no question about it. You can Google it. The idea that somebody is messing with the clouds is, is so mind-boggling that I am fascinated. I do not know what's going on in the clouds, but to me the clouds do not look right. Well, well spotted. It's a shame this person claims they're conspiracy-minded. The word conspiracy is a little bit silly really, because what it actually means is, is you hold an alternative or opposite view to the prescribed government view, to the prescribed rhetoric. So whatever the rhetoric is from so-called people in authority, if you hold a different view to what they're saying is the reality, you're conspiracy-minded or you're a conspiracy theorist. Got to drop that. Over to India via the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. Indian monsoon can be predicted better after volcanic eruptions. And the paragraph from that, findings can also help further developing climate models and could in fact also help assessing the regional implications of geoengineering experiments. Some scientists envision solar radiation management basically to block a portion of sun rays from warming Earth's surface, etc, etc. It ends with understanding the mechanisms at play is thus important. This is the same argument David Keith puts forward from Harvard that you have to do the experiments to understand what's possible and not possible. So you could completely screw things up with the experiments, but you have to do the experiments to know whether what they're experimenting with is good or bad. Yeah, right. Humans don't think like that. The same story in the Times of India. Over to EcoWatch. Why solar geoengineering should be part of the climate crisis solution. And there we see... In the article, it's Pro Geoengineering, David Keefe of Harvard University. This article is from Knowable Magazine, appearing in EcoWatch, but it's by Knowable Magazine. Some people think we should use it only as a get out of jail card in an emergency. Some people think we should use it to quickly try to get back to the pre industrial climate. I'm arguing we use solar geoengineering to cut the top off the curve by gradually starting it and gradually ending it. That's David Keefe's view. So who is Knowable Magazine? One of their sponsors is the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. Two trustees for the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation are from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. David Keefe has stated that him and his colleagues at MIT have worked out how many people will die if you do geoengineering. If you put sulfate aerosols in the stratosphere, for example, some of them are going to rain down the troposphere and they're going to add to air pollution and kill people. And in fact, myself and Steve Barrett at MIT are calculating how many people uh, will be killed. So that's a follow the money type thing. A pro David Keefe article interviewing David Keefe in an EcoWatch website by Knowable magazine. And it turns out the trustees are from MIT. So the same institution that David Keefe has worked with. Just a coincidence though. Over to the Maritime Executive. Who governs climate intervention and geoengineering on the high seas? With a range of marine geoengineering field trials inching forward, attention is turning to how research and eventual deployment should be governed. Now you can see uh, prototype cloud brightening equipment. So far, 27 different marine geoengineering schemes have been proposed. There have been roughly a dozen field tests, mostly focused on ocean iron fertilization. When a commercial company, Planktos Inc., proposed to test the technology off the Galapagos Islands in 2007, 
It sparked fears of unregulated interference with the planet's climate by entrepreneurs looking to turn a quick profit by selling sequestered CO2 as carbon credits. Globally, just a few marine geoengineering projects are ready for field trials. ICE 911, an initiative started by a lecturer at Stanford University in California. You'll be aware of California's 70 years of weather modification and of course California is on fire. So a person from Stanford aims to prove that it's possible to use technology to restore Arctic ice. The method involves scattering tiny glass silica beads on the surface of the thin young Arctic sea ice. Let's see how quickly you screw up the Arctic then, eh? But at least it can't catch fire, can it? Because it's ice. Over to China. Across China, specialised weather services guarantee bumper grape harvest. The bumper harvest, owed to a package of specialised services from the local meteorological bureau, including disaster warnings, weather modification and guidance on grape planting. Still in China, apple farming in North China embraces long-term sustainability. Last year, the county invested over 3 million won to build five cloud seeding and anti-hail sites. So pay attention Texans, the United Arab Emirates. Rain in UAE. UAE tests efficiency of new cloud seeding material in Texas. For those of you that remember last year, the UAE announced that they developed a new method of cloud seeding where their method using what they call nano cloud seeding technology makes the technology 100 times more effective than regular standard cloud seeding. There you see some flares upon a plane. The UAE Rain Enhancement Programme UAEREP has launched a flight campaign in Texas, United States to investigate the effect of novel cloud seeding nanomaterial. The Open Atmosphere Airborne Tests aim to measure the effect of the material on droplet size distribution and ultimately the rainfall generation process. There's the same story in another Middle East site called Utilities. The campaign includes two or three flights of approximately two to three hours each, using a minimum of two flares for each cloud penetration depending on individual cloud conditions. A total of 40 flares have been dedicated for the flight campaign that will be conducted in coordination with the Texas Water District cloud seeding aircraft. So 40 flares are going to be used at most, from what they say, from the nano styled flares 40 of them would be the equivalent of 4,000 regular cloud seeding flares so just to put that into perspective for you 40 doesn't sound so much but when they're 100 times stronger than the regular flares they're the equivalent of 4,000 flares being kicked off then the seeding aircraft will fly under cloud base and either ignite two flares in the updraft, so just to stop there then, two flares would be the equivalent of 200 flares, regular flares, from September 2019, this time last year. UAE trials new nanotechnology to make cloud seeding more effective, and there's the same story in the National. And this was tests done in the United Arab Emirates over the Northern Emirates, which proved nanotech cloud seeding tech worked. The reason they give that this is now being done over Texas is because the air over Texas is seen as clean, similar to the UAE. Over to the China Dialogue, there's an article on how to stop global warming, the most controversial solutions explained. That's an in-depth look at geoengineering. Nothing you don't already know if you know about all sides of it, but if you're not too sure, or you want some information to sh share that makes it look like it's all China and not America, etc., then there you go. Good article. Thailand, Bangkok Post. An article about China. China climate and the blame game. 
by an independent journalist. Theoretical research on such technologies is already underway. As time goes on, you, you will be hearing a lot more about stratospheric aerosol injection, marine cloud brightening and the like. And that's, uh, yeah, the Thai Bangkok Post. And then in the Star, Kenya, by the same <laughs> journalist, is the same article. That's a roundup of the news. Um, don't forget to make your friends in Texas aware of uh, what's going on there. If you have people in Texas, make sure they get to hear about what's going on there, because it's going on now. So it's a nice little diversion. That's an aeroplane. That's an upside down rainbow, Kembo. Yeah, you can see that rainbow, right? Oh, I hope. Look at that. That's mental. Can you still see it? Rainbow. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> That's crazy. From the film Looper. From my back garden. From 2011. This is the Council on Foreign Relations meeting to discuss I mean, geoengineering. My concern is that we get into a mode where we wait, we wait, we wait. Oh my God, there's no way we can do it fast enough. We got to do geoengineering. Yeah. And, and so that's another... Forget the other. Yeah, that that's really another is reason why I think you yeah. really have to understand today not just what could be the direct consequences, but what might be the downsides. Uh, and, you know, is it really indeed as simple and straightforward as we uh, many people think. I mean, for example, there's some recent results that suggest that sulfate may not be a terribly effective uh, strategy that you may want to use uh, sulfuric acid. Uh, one of the things, of course, that people worry about is what about acid rain? Well, it told, I mean, it turns out that the amount of material that you have to put in the stratosphere to offset is really small in comparative terms, and so uh, uh, the ecological impacts of, uh, of fallout um, are not likely to be uh, significant. And there are people also talking about specially engineered particles that would self-orient, self-levitate. I mean, there's all kinds of fairly wild uh, possibilities, and, but nobody's working seriously on most of them. I think I see another, yeah, yeah, got three place. Here now. yeah. Thank you. I'm Jim Turner from NOAA. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for talking about ocean acidification. Uh, but I do have a question about uh, some of the uh, field scale experiments that you were talking about doing. Uh, what are some of the parameters that you would need? Uh, because you certainly need something that's big enough so that you can detect an effect. And uh, also, uh, uh, something that, that is large enough so that you can learn enough to extrapolate from it. So can you talk about some of the parameters? You know, when you talk about a limited scale uh, a, you know, field test, can you talk about the kinds of, of size you're talking about? So not everything you do. Just, yeah, please. Let's, let's do this. There, I see two more hands, so let's accumulate the questions okay, and then, because we're sort of almost at the end of the All time. Right, fine. This is a general question, but besides Al Gore and the three of you, where is the leadership going to come from uh, to uh, engage these projects and move forward? And there was another, or was I mistaken? Yeah, it's... Okay. <clears throat> Spurgeon Keening, I just wanted to ask uh, whether uh, the proposal I've heard uh, that it would be useful to paint all roofs, mm -hmm. parking lots, and roads white uh, so the <coughs> light would be reflected directly out. If that were suddenly done, would that make a measurable effect or would it be 
irrelevant in the, the larger scheme of things. I'll take the first and the last, and John can get the middle one. <laughs> he is, after all, a political scientist up here. Um, not, not every experiment that you'd want to do in the atmosphere n needs to be a long-term measurement of changes in forcing. I mean, for example, there are serious questions about how would you introduce the material. You, you may want to introduce it as a... Uh, uh, in uh, uh, a gaseous or liquid form, you may, and so you need to to look at how spray technology works. Uh, 